Hi, this is Eli Kranzberg, and welcome to this series on Ozone 9 from Isotope. Now, Ozone 9 works as either a plugin or a standalone application. We're looking at the plugin version right now, and it's designed as a suite of processing modules specifically engineered and designed for mastering your music. Now, mastering is often thought of as this kind of mystical black art, and I really appreciate Isotope's attention to detail in their user interfaces in general, but specifically in Ozone 9, where you can dig in and get just the right amount of level of complexity that you want, depending on how you want to work. So let's start by taking a look at the big picture and how Ozone 9 is laid out and set up. First off, the interface is resizable, so we can grab it at the lower right corner like that and click and drag and resize it simply that way. Now, the idea is that we call up the plugins serially or the processing modules serially in the horizontal row at the top, and this default preset has an equalizer and a maximizer. We click the plus button and we get a variety of other ones that we can continue adding on here. Now, each of these modules has some common controls. We can bypass them individually with this button. We can solo them with that. We get context-specific presets for each individual module when we click on this button over here. And we can remove individual modules with this X button. Now, many of the modules have multiple views within them. So the idea is we click here and the center of the display updates to display the relevant parameters. But we have multiple views, like for example, here, I can click this icon to get a more detailed view of the equalizer. Here we have different upper portion display. Here, for example, there's a couple of different ways of displaying the waveform as well. So that's common throughout the interface. Now we have master presets for the whole plugin at the top over here. And this is a great way of getting started understanding the potential in Ozone by exploring these. So we have all-purpose descriptive titles here that'll get you started getting a chain set up in place that'll act as a good starting point. We get specific genres as well. If you're mixing in any of these specific categories, that'll often be a good starting point for you. So there's a variety to choose from, and I'd suggest exploring them to get some ideas on how you can set up and lay out Ozone 9. Generally speaking, I think there's three ways you can start using Ozone 9 on your music. So you've got a finished mix, you want to master it. You can start with one of these presets by calling up one of these genre specific styles or all purpose presets, and that'll get you started. And then you can tweak from there. The other way is to use Master Assistant. And this also is fantastic technology that Isotope has developed in many other plugins as well, but specifically in Ozone 9. What it'll do is intelligently listen to the track that you're going to be working on and make some decisions for you and how to start off your processing chain. Now, we're going to go through this in more detail, but the idea is that you have it listen, you give it a few parameters in terms of what you're looking for, it'll analyze the audio and give you a starting point, and then you can tweak from there. And the third way to use Ozone, if you're more experienced, is just to start from scratch and build up one module at a time based on what you need and want. Now, regardless of the genre or style of music, there's a couple of general principles that are applicable overall, and I want to sort of touch on that in this first video. We have the metering over here on the right. Now, the input meters, it's important that you set the right levels. And you want to set the input level so that the input meter is peaking in the upper half to upper quarter of the range here. For example, here's some music. So around there is good. I'm just a little bit below unity value, and that's fine. Now, if you want to reset any of these, you can simply double click the parameter. And this applies for anything in the interface. If you make any adjustments, you can double click and values will reset to their default Unity values. So that's the first thing. Make sure your input is set properly in order to get Ozone to work properly. Now, we have a couple of features here that you want to always sort of have in the back of your mind for going back and forth on as you're working. We have Gain Match which is really valuable in this type of mastering scenario. When we're processing the audio, it's going to add gain, and we don't want to get distracted by the gain changes that are happening. When I say distracted, we want to hear what the processes are actually doing other than simply adding gain. So when this is enabled, it'll allow the signal to remain the same when the processing is on or off, so we can really focus in on the processing itself and not simply volume. Now, we can bypass the whole processing chain on or off there, and that's independent of the gain match. Now, we can also swap left and right, good for checking things. We can sum to mono, good to check your mixes in mono. This is used for when we want to load in a reference track, and there's a lot of facility within Ozone, which we'll be exploring for 
using finished mastered songs as a reference to match either dynamics, level, tone, imaging, etc. So this little eye icon is an actual power button for these modules. It turns it on or off, and this just brings up the window to display the relevant parameters. Now here, this is really interesting. We can get an idea of what the audio is going to sound like once it's compressed to these compressed formats, and we can solo the artifacts, which is really revealing. So for example, let's say this little bit, I want to hear what it's going to sound like as an MP3 at 128. Now check this out. That's what's happening when we compress it to an MP3 at 128 kilobots per second. So very revealing. And finally, we have here dither. And a couple of words about dither, because again, these are general principles that apply no matter what you're using it for. When you're using Ozone as a plugin in your DAW, make sure not to use any processing after Ozone. This should be the last in your chain, especially when you're dithering down to a lower bit depth. And make sure that any level adjustments you do are going to happen here with the output sliders and not in your DAW, because that'll sort of undo the quality dithering that's happening here. And make sure to disable dithering in your DAW when you're bouncing to disk, because most DAWs have their own internal dithering. So if we're using this, make sure to disable it. Now, one final general interface convention in Ozone 9 is relative parameter linking. Now, you'll notice when I move this, that they're both moving together. We can unlink them with this icon over here, and we can move them independently. Now, what happens is if we separate them like that and then relink them, they'll retain their relative offsets and move together. The relative changes are being preserved. And I can unlink and change it, of course, some more. And I can always double click to reset to unity values if I want and then relink them. So this applies also to parameters within the individual modules where channel linking is a feature. For example, on this stereo EQ, I can separate left and right. And here's our link button. So with them unlinked, I can move them separately. That's for the left side. And then this is for the right side. So we can jump back and forth like that. And now I can link them and then retain the relative differences. So if I lower one of them, they're both going to be lowered, but by a relative amount. Same thing, raising it like that. The relative distances are retained. And finally, one last kind of general practice here that you would expect in a modern interface like this. These modules can easily be swapped by drag and drop to change the order. So that's a little welcome to Ozone 9 introduction. We'll continue with more in the next video.